talk about uh, our SPEAR speech recognition system. Um, and as Bill said, we've concentrated on speech recognition in high noise environments, and I'll explain what that means uh, in a few minutes. Um, so first off, who are we? We're a really small company, 18 people uh, out of tropical Cleveland, Ohio. Um, the weather's, you know, there is a lot nicer than it is here, so I apologize, but uh, um, we develop uh, innovative communication, yeah, <laughs> develop innovative communications and automated speech recognition systems for high noise environments. Uh, so our two products are Spear, our automated speech recognition system, and Millicom headsets, which are uh, an in-ear headset that's used for uh, communication uh, uh, products. Uh, but I'm here today to talk about the, uh, the automated speech recognition system. So why do people want to use speech control? Uh, most of you probably use speech control on your phones, uh, that sort of thing. So it's a very natural user interface. Uh, it's a lot more natural than using a mouse or uh, other features, even though those are what we have become accustomed to. Speech is our natural uh, interaction with our world around us. We talk to everybody. Um, you know, that's how we get our, get our information is through speech. It's a very natural interface. It also provides us with heads up, hands free control. Um, very important, obviously, in the military to have your head up and your hands to be able to be on your weapon uh, or to be able to do some other task. Um, it also works well with multimodal systems. And what that means is I can use speech to augment a control system that's already in place. Uh, so for example, we've done some work with robotic controllers where the operator is using a joystick to drive a uh, unmanned ground vehicle and then using speech to switch cameras, to operate a manipulator at the same time. And soldiers have said to us before, it's like having a third hand to be able to operate uh, this equipment. The problem that most speech recognition systems have now is ambient noise. Noise in the environment is very, very hard on a speech recognition system. Even very small amounts of noise, like the quiet background noise that's going on back here, uh, can really foul up a system. Uh, in fact, we've done some internal testing with some leading engines and found that noise levels as low as 80 decibels can cause the accuracy to drop below 50%, uh, which is pretty, you know, again, 80 decibels is roughly, think of your windows down on the highway, um, you know, that kind of noise level. It's, it's loud, but not super loud, and that is enough to cause the recognition to go way down. So our solution, oops, excuse me. Our solution is uh, what we call Spear. Uh, it's a modular architecture consisting of the main uh, secret sauce of ours, which is our noise robust front end. Uh, this is software that allows us to adjust rapidly to changing noise environments. It also allows us to estimate areas of speech where noise has corrupted the speech signal as well. Uh, it's internally developed. Uh, the engine itself is internally developed with IRAD dollars. Uh, we have keyword spotting algorithms that allow us to pick out uh, individual words uh, out of speech. This allows you to have a speech recognition system on and be able to give commands to a system without having to worry about the system picking up false alarms, basically. So think of it as, uh, you know, I like to, to give the analogy of, of a dog. If you have a dog uh, and train a dog, you can teach a dog how to sit. But if you're talking to your friend and say, hey, go sit over there, go sit down, talking to somebody else, the dog's not going up and down while you're saying sit. It waits for a command when you say sit, then the dog can sit down. The dog is very good at keyword spotting. We're doing the same thing with speech recognition. Um, we can do customized transcription um, language models as well. Uh, that allows us to work in very technical environments. Uh, one of the use case scenarios I'll talk about in a few minutes is uh, combat casualty care. Um, again, take your Android phone and give a combat casualty care narrative. The accuracy is not going to be very good because it's a general purpose model. It's meant for standard day-to-day -day communications. We can customize those models to fit uh, very jargon-rich um, languages. Um, we also can uh, customize the recognition engine to work in specific noise environments. Uh, again, one of these cases, scenarios I'll talk about in a few minutes was in the back of an MATV uh, or MRAP vehicle where the noise is very constant. You constantly have the fans blowing and the engine noise in the background, and that's a very constant environment. We can then tune our uh, acoustic models so that the uh, accuracy in that environment is even higher than uh, it is standardly. Um, we provide an application programming interface, and for those of you not in the software world, just basically means it, you can easily integrate our system with a few function calls into our libraries. Um, we support all different kinds of languages, uh, C++, Java, .NET, Python, uh, and then we also have an Android API similar to what Google uh, uses so that you can actually plug our system into an Android uh, 
system that's already using Google's speech recognition and use ours instead. Uh, and we're also headset agnostic. Um, really doesn't matter to us what headset you use. Um, so we work with most government issue headsets. So our performance in noise, um, this was testing uh, done at our facilities uh, with a Peltor headset, which is a pretty common uh, military headset. And I'm gonna explain this a little bit here. We have uh, two different um, uh, modes that we run in, a command mode, which is a very finite grammar. So that's things like turn left, go right, very finite commands that only recognize that command. So if I have a finite command of turn left, it's not gonna recognize turn to the left. It's turn left is the command that we're looking for. And we also have transcription, which is a more general uh, um, way of speaking. So that is a more statistical model. It really doesn't matter how you frame the words. They're going to actually recognize as you say them. Um, so we did two tests, one with the command mode and one with the transcription task. Uh, and as you can see, our noise uh, our accuracy, uh, even in high noise levels, such as 105 decibel, uh, which is in the UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter with the doors open, uh, our accuracy level stayed very high. So talk about a couple of the use cases that we've, uh, that we've worked with with uh, Spear. One, uh, the first use case is transcription and data entry. Um, and the, the project that I'm using for this is our phase two uh, and phase three SIBR that we have with uh, MRMC and Tatric. Uh, the problem that, they're, that Tatric is trying to solve is a lack of real-time documentation at the point of injury. Um, so a lot of times when a guy gets injured on the battlefield, they're supposed to be filling out a paper form that says what the medic did to treat the casualty um, paper blows away, it gets smudged, it gets blood on it, et cetera. It doesn't work all that well. So what they want to do is automate the system with a more electronic um, way of capturing data. They came to us because speech, like, as I said, is a very natural user interface for the medic to use. He's already narrating what he's doing to himself. That's how they learn uh, to go through the assessment is they narrate what, what they're doing as they do it. We capture that speech and we use it to then fill out a TCCC C card. Uh, we started off just doing um, command-based system where the medic actually would have to say a specific command, but our phase three is going to allow the medic to give his narrative and then be able to fill out that form based on the information inside that narrative, so using a little bit of a natural language processing algorithm. Um, some of the challenges that we had to solve for this, um, we're running on a Samsung Note 2, so it's not exactly a powerhouse of a computer. Um, so we have to be able to be memory efficient and maintain high levels of accuracy. Um, Plus, we have to be able to recognize a lot of speech. So again, the TCC language is, is very complex. It's medical. It's very technical. Um, so we have a 64,000 word general purpose model that we use uh, for that. Um, the other ch challenge that we had is we had to run locally on the device. We can't use bandwidth to go out to a server like Google or Siri does now. Uh, you know, Again, you can take your phone. If you, if you uh, talk to Siri, ask a question, it's actually going out to Apple servers transcribing that data and then sending the text back to you. We can't do that on the battlefield. We have to run locally on the device. So that's something that we do uh, as well that um, we think it sets us apart from other speech recognition systems. Um, we've had two warfighter demonstrations with this. Uh, one was a very rough system last year uh, at the Surdex C4 ISR exercise at Fort Dix. So rough that it crashed in front of the general that we were demoing it to. Not a good thing, but uh, we actually were able to get the point across and he really liked what he saw. So we're actually coming back this year with a, uh, a complete system um, that will be a lot more robust. And then if I can get this to play, I have a video here. Oh. And I don't know, can you start it? Okay. While he's getting that ready, I'll just kind of preface this a little bit. What this is is uh, one of the uh, participants in the C4ISR exercise using our system. Um, in the background, you can hear that he's actually standing right by an MRAP ambulance, so you can hear the engine noise in the background. Um, and as you can see, it's recognizing all the words that he's saying. That's okay if we can't get the audio working. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's fine. All right, we just get past that. Again, these presentations will be available, so you can actually go, and I believe this video might be on our website as well. Um, 
So he used uh, basically a, co a combination of command-based grammar and a transcription task as well. So you know, please feel free to go watch that video. Um, the second use case I'll talk about is in an extreme noise environment. Um, so we're using uh, the T2 program, uh, again, funded by MRMC. We're a subcontractor to Sierra Nevada Corporation. Basically, we're doing the same thing as the um, combat medic, or the ground medic, except this time in the back of a Black Hawk helicopter. So what, after the casualty gets picked up from the battlefield, he needs transported to the hospital combat support hospital or battalion aid station. Care is going on as he's on the helicopter. And again, the flight medic on that is documenting his care as he goes along. Well, as you can imagine, again, same thing. He doesn't want to be riding down in the back of a helicopter. He uh, doesn't want to keep track of paper. It's windy. It's noisy. So he needs some way to enter data, and that's where speech came in. Uh, again, typical speech recognition systems did not work well. Like 105 to 112 decibels in the back of a Black Hawk helicopter. It's very loud. Um, so we developed a, uh, using our software, developed a, a system to integrate with Sierra Nevada's uh, medic software. Um, we had to have a conveyance score of 95% with a word accuracy of 85%. What that meant was is that as you transcribe speech, there's going to be errors. There's always errors. No speech recognition system is 100%. Um, so what you want to make sure is that the person getting this transcribed speech can understand what was being said. Uh, and again, if any of you have used uh, the transcription system for your voicemail, a lot of times it's not exactly correct, but you can kind of get the idea of it. And that's what we were measured against. Uh, and we actually were able to blow that away. Um, we had a conveyance score judged by the nurse that was reading the transcription coming in of well above 95%, and our word accuracy was actually 91%. Um, so we, we did very well in this, in this uh, environment. And again, most of the errors were words like to, the, am, he, she, uh, words that kind of were small words that really didn't affect the meaning of what was the treatment that was being given. So that was a, a good thing. Uh, we had a successful demonstration of this at the Nevada Telemedicine Conference uh, last September. Uh, it was a little nerve-wracking because it was a live demonstration. So as they were as they were doing the demo at Stead Airfield, it was being uh, you know broadcasted to the conference hall. And as they they spoke the data, you could see the words coming across the form. So it was a little nerve-wracking, but it worked very well. Um, our third use case is for command and control. Um, this was done on a proof of concept integration with the Nautum. Uh, program that was talked about this morning, if you guys saw the Tekken 10 at the other um, session. Uh, the problem statement was enabling C2 on the move. Uh, where we came in is they wanted to be able to use speech to enter data in the back of the MRAP. Uh, again, as you can imagine, most of the NOTAM system runs on a Toughbook computer. Typing while you're going down a bumpy road is not a good or easy thing to do. So they wanted to, to practice or to test using speech to enter data. So we did uh, speech enable three of their C2 applications. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we created noise specific models for the back of the MATV vehicle that actually gave us an extra 3% accuracy. Not saying a lot, but the accuracy without that was 94% and the accuracy with the speech uh, or the uh, custom acoustic models was 97%. So quite a big jump to actually go from 94 to 97% in speech recognition world. Uh, we did last demonstration, well, unfortunately it was April 4th, 2013. Um, due to sequestration, we kind of got uh, nixed from the program, but uh, we had a successful demonstration uh, and uh, look forward to continue this work at some point. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but uh, Spear has been through a number of warfighter events um, and uh, we, uh, we feel that uh, we have a very good system uh, for the military that works well in the environment that they're in. So to sum it up, we have a noise robust uh, ASR engine it's tested in noise levels up to 105 decibels with 90% accuracy plus. Uh, we are platform and headset agnostic, meaning that we don't, don't it doesn't matter what uh, whether you're running Windows, Linux, Android, we can run on it. Headset agnostic, we don't require a certain headset. Um, some work better than others, obviously, but we don't require that. Uh, we can run locally on the user device. Again, extremely important in the defense world. We don't require any bandwidth to run, to run our system. Um, we can develop domain-specific language models for complex and jargon-rich applications like tactical combat casualty care. Uh, we've done a couple SIBRs, or working on a couple SIBRs um, with an ASEC trainee uh, for uh, an air support uh, trainee. Uh, requires him to speak to a lot of different assets. We're working on developing a speech recognition system to help that training go easier. Uh, and we can do custom speech-enabled solutions. So, you know, if you don't want to just buy our API, 
we can actually come to us and we can actually develop an entire solution for you. We have the software development capabilities to do that as well. So that's it. Um, any questions? Yes. Yeah, so the question, the question is on accents, um, how the speech recognition system handles accents. That's always a question that we get. Um, the system is unfortunately designed for native English speakers. That's the way it's designed. Uh, really depends on the accent. Some work better than others. Um, we do offer profile training uh, for those uh, people it doesn't work for that allows us to kind of get a little more information on how you speak. We also do live adaptation. So as you use the system, it'll actually get better with understanding. And in some cases, we actually did do um, some specific accent uh, models. Uh, we did some work with uh, the UK Ministry of Defense and had to do some accent models with them um, to cover some of their, their more um, you know, Cockney accents. So, uh. Chris, is your model that you would, you would uh, license the software to OEM? Correct. But you would not have a product that a consumer could buy straight? Um, we will have, we do have, uh, you know, an API that a consumer can buy, but not, you know, an end user. It's normally it's a business to business, or you know, again, in our case, government, you know, purchase. And then for the specific environments, whether I'm working behind an MRAP or in a field of, of, of Huey helicopters, does that require training to to kind of clear out the? The noise, the ambient noise, or? No, the system itself is designed to handle high levels of ambient noise. Um, the training is only done if you really want to add like a little extra oomph to the system, and that needs to be done beforehand, so we get noise models uh, like we did for the uh, the NOTAM program. So it'd be part of the tailored? It's uh, part of the tailoring, okay. right, but it does not require any, any training or adaptation while you're on the field. Actually, all that is happening um, while, while the system is running, so that adaptation occurs automatically. And then the final, my final question is, as we move into a more distributed network environment where the reality is that maybe through our land warrior systems that we do have connectivity, would we start looking at a, a architecture where you do have service and you get better um, Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the server architecture will give you a, a lot more speed. Um, you know, but still, even on a on the Note 2, we're running about three times slower than real time. So a 10 second would take about 30 seconds to transcribe locally on the device. Uh, on a faster, we have a, a newer Nexus 9 tablet that we're testing on now for another project, and it's actually real time right there on the device. So, so uh, but, but but the the answer to your question, yes, we you know we can move to that architect server architecture, but we, where we've been focused has been running locally. And then tomorrow, if I ask you to provide some software so the next presenter can, t can talk in this environment, can we do a display of the text and, and get a score? So yes and no. Uh, you know, Right now, we haven't focused much on the general purpose side of things, and that's kind of what we would need for something like that. If you want to, to have a combat medic come in and give a narrative, then I can do that. But Roger. Thank you so much, sure. sir. Oh. Sorry. No? You might want to talk to the SEALs. Okay. Seal delivery vehicle team one is here at Pearl Harbor. Okay. We met with them a few months ago, and one of their problems is they're they're in their delivery vehicle um, on a mission, and they're they're on they're using helium or some sort of helium mixture, and they're looking for a, a voice to text solution because their their voices are really high. Okay. It's hard to communicate. Oh, okay. I was wondering how how it would work in that situation where. Someone's sucking on a helium balloon to... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have any experience in that, but I'm, I'm assuming we could probably create acoustic models to cover that. that uh, but yeah, no, thank you for that. We'll definitely look into that. And, and those guys will, will buy stuff without, you know... Fantastic. All right, thank you. Acquisition. Thank machine. you.